Hello my soccer universe. No, I'm not gonna apologize for wearing Milan. Yes, City of Milan. We won the Derby and putting them up there. Uh, so doubling up what I usually don't do. But you know, if you win the Derby, yes, you get your own video. Uh, yes, I'm gonna put up a Milan background and then yes, for the actual Serie A review, I'm also gonna mention it quite a few times. However, I will do my best to not talk too much about the Derby because I spent already an entire video on that. Uh, but I want to mention a few things that I missed. First off, um, most and most, most importantly, the inane red card that Theo Hernandez gave up. That was absolutely uncalled for and it was kind of, yeah, I'm going to get myself now sent off because I'm just pissed. And this is something that, yeah, this could derail Milan's, uh, you know, everything is now flying high. We will see the next, next, next game. This could derail it. Very, 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 very stupid. I also did not mention the um, <laughs> little time when Mignon, he did everything right, but when he came out at the end of the first half, took the ball from the Inter player, dribbled him <laughs> and got it away. And everything was right, but they still got a, sh sh a shot off. So that was one thing. And the very last, last thing I, I have to mention is, uh, yes, uh, the changes made a total sense. Uh, for Milan, it did not make sense for Inter. Um, but also, how Giroud, despite not being the hero, I still think Magnon should be the hero, but how Giroud was more or less hanging in the air until he scored that one goal. And he also fought, made the uh, decisive tackle for his own goal. So this was the first time that Giroud really was in the but we'll talk about the rest of the league. Uh, but, but before that, you might have realized it. I have a slightly different setup. The camera moved a little bit over. So we see the jerseys on this side a little bit better, which, which, which is what I like. I still hiding more or less two jerseys, which I also meant that, you know, I always uh, rank them in a way of who statistically improved or in terms of expected points improved the most since the last time. We still have one, two and three here, but then I continue four, five, uh, then six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so uh this is how i decided to 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 do it uh 13 actually i think i made i messed somewhere up but you know it goes first one two three four five then um six and seven and then uh, we go down here and then we'll start again here not that it really matters but if you want to know the reasoning behind the madness um Overall, we gotta say that, yes, we have, uh, we potentially have a title race on our hand. The only title race in Europe. In many ways, however, I'm still not, I'm still not quite there because Inter has a game in hand. And unless Inter now start dropping points, I don't see that this is becoming a veritable title race. So just hold your horses yet, but it is exciting. Uh, it's also exciting for the Champions League races because, you know, uh, Juve won the window and the new guys already scored for Juve. And with Atalanta faltering, Juve actually put themselves also in a pretty good position already to make it into the top four forward spots. So kind of money well spent in some ways. However, I want to start my review in Rome, where Roma only a nil-nil draw against Genoa, who play in their interesting great jerseys. I should say interesting. I, I do like them in, in, in a way. However, they completely mark them with, with sponsors. They, Genoa is battling, uh, even getting a red card through Ostigard, and then very late on, Saniolo finally scores the winner. When he's taking off for a foul. I think he even takes off his shirt, gets a yellow, a, a yellow card, and then once he's is take, taking off, he goes right away. What did he call? What did he call? What did he call? And he, he didn't let it go and, and got sent off. Stupid. Stupid in many ways. And of course, Mourinho, very, very happy, as you can imagine. Uh, as I said, uh, the derby was uh, the next thing. Uh, we're not talking about that one now. However, um, Lazio steamrolling Fiorentina yeah it is a little bit uh, we have to see how Fiorentina can recover from losing Dujan Vlaovic. which I still think they have enough but you know things like that can, can happen especially with the game you know the goals came all kind of uh, late Milinkovic Savic in the second half then Immobile of course scores um, the first one and then an on goal by Biragi. Um 
don't sleep off Fiorentina. I, I, they may not make it European spots quite yet, but I think they will finish in the top eight, I would say. Uh, I actually thought that Atalanta, despite losing Robin Gossens, still has a really good shot of making the Champions League space, but then you cannot lose to Cagliari. A win for Cagliari that could be crucial, and you see this is the biggest win, despite the derby, uh, <laughs> this, uh, from this weekend. That might actually put Cagliari into a safe place, uh, at least for the moment, moment being. They take the lead through Pereiro, then uh, Musso is sent off for um, At Atalanta, even with 10 men, uh, they get equalized through Palomino, but then Pereiro uh, makes it 2-1, and uh, uh, Cagliari hang on for an important win for them. And paired with Napoli winning at Venezia, uh, where we had a... How to say? I mean, it's the Venezia fourth jersey, and nominally, I think it's the um, Napoli fourth as well. So this was a duel of fourth jerseys. However, with the, uh, it might as well be Napoli's uh, 280th jersey. The way they have been racing uh, them, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, at least this one looks kind of interesting. I gotta say. In any case, uh, Napoli takes care of business. Victor Osimhen, yeah, not the at the AFCON, coming back, scoring one, and then Petania very late on, making the 2 nil. Result that I didn't really need to see, but you know, maybe Napoli should, should, should get rolling because they have a very important game coming up on the next weekend. Um, also no, Totobo Sampdoria beating up on Sassolo, 4 nil, pretty big big, big victory. Uh, makes me a teeny bit nervous, to be honest. I think they have... Um, What's it about the Giampolo back at the helm? You know, the guy who basically basically messed up Milan. However, I think outside of the Milan Derby, the big story is definitely Juve's 2 0 win over Verona. Where Juve, it seemed like, you know, there was excitement in the stands, uh, which is something I haven't seen for a Juve match in, in a while. You felt this is a new start, there's something new coming. And then that Vlaovic scores the opening goal. And Zakaria gets the second one, 30th and 61st, respectively. And then on top of it, uh, Dybala and Morata, respectively, assisting. Kind of shows there might be something going on. And it kind of fits to the whole uh, overall storyline. I think this was a very, very, very important win for uh, Juventus. Um, they get now in the top four. You, even if you do not have, at the moment... Um, uh, and, um, Chiesa, I think there is there could be something growing. I mean, wait and see. It's an early start, but beating a Verona team that has been a little bit your nemesis uh, in the past season feels kind of good. I think the only thing for me, the only real sour note is why did Verona play in green? You can play in blue against Juve. I don't get that. I don't know why we need to have that many colors mix and match. But for the same reason, I could say why was Venezia playing in red um, and not against Napoli. So, so be it. Uh, yesterday evening, Salernitana point against Spezia. I'm not sure if this will do them any good. I think it's time with that we look at the standings. As I said, it's still... You feel there may be a title race and there's a little bit... Especially in Milan, uh, there's a, uh, for Milan, there's a little bit of excitement coming. Uh, I just don't trust it quite yet because you got the big points and it, it would, it's the most Milan thing to do to not just drop a few points. But it is one point between those three teams. Um, but as I said, me, uh, Inter has a game in hand. So uh, it will definitely need Napoli to beat Inter uh, in order to make this a proper title race. But then also the race for the top four is, a is between Juve and Atalanta. And for some reason at this very moment, I kind of feel that Juve might just nick it. Let's see. Uh, Lazio and Roma for the other spots and maybe Fiorentina is hanging in there as well. I don't think that we will get uh, Hellas Verona in there. And if you look at, at the bottom, um, suddenly Cagliari look really good. They went from over 70% uh, relegated, just 30%. You have two points ahead of Venezia. Venezia, I think for the, for the first time this season, find themselves down in the relegation zone. Yeah, 
I would be sad to see them leave, if I'm very honest, because uh, just because of this beautiful Georgia, just in, in general, you know, when it said it would be nice. But on the other side, if you think about the stadium infrastructure there and so on, yeah, maybe it's it's not necessarily a Serie A team, but there is a certain charm to the whole thing. Now, coming up before we go into the next ne next round, we actually have the quarterfinals in the cup, and already tonight we have Inter against Roma. Boy, what a match to look forward to. Then the next day, Milan against Lazio. The new pitch is on zero. It's going to get destroyed again. Within 24 hours, we have a Milan team against the Roman team. And then they play each other in the semifinal, uh, final, who, whoever wins. It's folly. Please switch at least some home field around. And the, the San Zero pitch should be taken care of. Not wasted with such ridiculous draws and in any case i think a Coppa Italia could use a little bit i mean it's nice to have those big matches but i think it could use a little bit of revamping that we don't get all the big teams in there atalanta for, 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 uh, for a rebound and then juve against sassuolo let's see if the story will continue there and then on the weekend as i said the big one napoli inter and again it's a saturday 6 uh, 6 30 kickoff i thought it was a six o'clock I, I might have done something wrong there um in any in any in any any case, that's the one to look forward to. Then on Sunday, Milan against Sampdoria. Uh, this is a game that makes me nervous too. Because then we have Atalanta Juve. It's a pretty big round coming up. We have will it be a title race and will Juve kick out Atalanta? So pretty interesting stuff coming up. And then on to top it off, Sassuolo against Roma. And Spezia Fiorentina, I don't sleep on that one. Italiano went from Spezia to Fiorentina, so that's actually also a rather special game. So loads of things to be excited about in Serie A. Please drop a line below how you think that the Serie A race will move forward in all its facets. Uh, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!